our church believes that we have to grow, and growth is a necessity for you to be successful in God's kingdom. And the theme or the model of our church is change. Come have a new growth experience. And what we mean by that is as you continue to move forward in your knowledge and in your, lo- your walk with the Lord, you will find yourself changing. You'll change every day of your life. The change may seem small, but after a while, it'll be so evident everyone will see the change. And as we just continue to put God first in our lives, we know that he's growing each and every one of us. And we don't all grow at the same measure. We don't all understand at the same time. But one thing about God, he's certain to see to it that each of us will be nurtured and established in him through his word. Amen? Our theme for the month of December has been dealing with being prepared for the rapture. I know a lot of people still have a problem believing such a thing is going to happen, but we at the Home Assembly Church, we still believe that Jesus is coming back. I'm going to say it again. We still believe that Jesus is coming back. And so today, I just wanted to put some thoughts into your mind. We're here to remember the birth of Christ, and in conjunction with our theme being the rapture preparedness, I just wanted to kind of give the household of faith an opportunity today to take some thoughts into consideration. Everything that we do pretty much when it comes to walking with God is centered around our faith. And all of us find that from time to time our faith is challenged. Mine is, yours is. Don't think just because I preach and teach that my faith doesn't get challenged. It gets challenged just like anybody else's. And I'm not the kind of preacher that pretends like I've passed over everything and I've jumped over all the experiences. I'm still growing and learning about Jesus just as everyone else is. And so your faith gets challenged. The thing I want you to think about today, we're we're all excited. We believe in the birth of Jesus Christ. But I want to make you aware of something. To believe in his coming is also necessary to believe he has come. Now, the thing that you need to understand today is when you look in your Bible, and a lot of people say the Bible is hard to understand, but let me just bring some very clear points out to you today. First of all, far back in the Bible is Genesis 3.15. The scriptures warn us or advise us or clue us that Jesus is coming. The Bible lets you know that the head of the serpent would be bruised by Jesus and that the woman would be the one that brings forth Jesus. And then when you move further into the Bible, you look in Isaiah, and we're going to take a quick moment, and I'm going to flip over to the book of Isaiah, and I'm going to read that particular scripture to you. In the book of Isaiah in chapter 7, the prophet comes forth with more clarification and lets it be known exactly how this Messiah is going to come into the earth. In Isaiah chapter 7, he says in verse 14, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. Now, the thing that's so fascinating is if you know anything about Hebrew culture and Hebrew history of the Jews, because they believed that their Messiah was going to come, every woman was looking forward to being the chosen one, to be the one that would bring forth this son. So having children was a premium because you just didn't know who was going to get chosen. The interesting thing is they did not know when And they did not know who would be the one that would bring forth this wonderful child. But the most fascinating thing of all is even from the time of Adam and his wife, who knew that God made the promise that he was going to fix the situation of man's sin and put man in a position that he would be in a good graces with God again by bringing forth the Messiah, They had to believe it from as far back as Adam straight up until Jesus was born and brought into the face of this world. The interesting thing is, is you'll discover that many of the prophets that we talk about, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, who's one of the biggest leaders of the Bible, do you realize each one of them had to believe in the coming of their Savior? 
They had to believe that he was going to be born. They had to believe he was going to come into the world and bring about to them a change that would place them in a position where their lives would be in the presence of God forever. They believed in that promise. They didn't doubt it. They didn't question in it. And let me tell you something else that they believed in. They believed in the resurrection. They believed that the body that you and I have was not going to be the body that we're going to keep forever. And it's just interesting to me that today that we're in the year of 2000, almost in 10, people have a hard time believing that Jesus is going to come again. But yet and still, it took him coming the first time and being believed upon by many, and it did come to pass. And now here we are in the most greatest times of all with intelligence in abundance, information at our fingertips, all kinds of discoveries and data at our availability. But you know what's missing around all of us in this world today is people do not believe. Now, I didn't say faith was totally missing, because let me explain something to you. Everybody has a measure of faith in them, but we choose to believe what we want to believe, and we choose to reject what we want to reject. And what I want to petition in your mind today is, is I would like for you to just stop and think for a moment if Noah and Adam and Eve and Jacob and Isaac, and Daniel, and all of these great people from the Old Testament didn't see anything happen, but kept on believing and believing from one year to the next, to the next, to the next. The Bible lets it be known when you look in the scriptures and the gospels, 42 generations had to pass before Jesus was born. That meant that there was a long span of time for people to believe or not to believe. And just like it is today, there were those who believed and there were those who did not believe. Here's the challenge for you and I. I would like for you to look in your Bibles with me in 2 Timothy chapter 4. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, we have the writings of the great, great preacher Paul. He had become a teacher and a mentor in a lot of respects to Timothy. Timothy was a young up-and-coming preacher, a young up-and-coming pastor, a young man on the horizons to do great things for God, but he was entering into a time of ministry where people were becoming just like they are already today, indifferent, cold, and distant, and unbelieving. And I'm going to explain something to you. It's wonderful to remember the birth of Christ, but let me show you what's even more wonderful to remember, that he's coming back again. And let me just tell you something. He's not a baby any longer. He's not in a manger. He's not wrapped up in swaddling clothes. And it's wonderful for us to remember and sing about those things. Please, let's continue to do that. But we need to also get current on our history as to where Jesus is. It's nice to remember when you were born, and we can pull out the pictures, and we can remember our baby pictures when they show them to us. I got baby pictures of my son sitting at the house in his little cradle and his little bed set up all there. It's all nice and good to have those memories. We can have the memories of Jesus the baby, but what we need to have in our hearts and minds today is Jesus is alive and well. Jesus died and went to the cross, and Jesus rose again, and Jesus is coming back. And he's coming back for people who have it in their mind that they're looking for him to return. In 2 Timothy, if you look in chapter 4, I'd like to just expedite time, and I'm going to read verses 6, 7, and 8. Paul says to Timothy, for I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge,